All right, here's GIMP. You're gonna see there's a, several panels that show up. It might look slightly different than what I have here. I'm working on my Mac. Um, but there's a, we're gonna be working with three main tools today. There's the healing tool right there and the cloning tool, which is right next to it on the left right there. Um, you'll notice that when you click on either one, there's tool options that show up underneath and those tool options change, like the sizing and all that stuff change when you kind of toggle in between both of them. So you can see there's the cloning one. Um, we're also going to uh, be using the zoom tool, which I'll show you in a moment. But right now what, what I'll have you do is um, you're going to open up the file damaged photograph. and it's going to show up in that main window and that's the main working window so when you first open up GIMP it's empty but once you open up a file of course it'll show up there so here I'll kind of expand it to you can move all these windows around to be comfortable to you you could switch them around if you want to even so I'm going to grab that zoom tool just a little magnifying glass and I'll zoom in on part of this photograph and you can see there's kind of a crease running through the whole image and we're going to use our cloning tool and our healing tool to repair that whole crack. So I'll go over and grab my healing tool and go over on my image. And you kind of want the size of the tool to be appropriate for the area you're working. If it's super huge, then you're gonna end up making an obvious edit. You want it to be as subtle as possible. So you can adjust the size by hitting the bracket buttons on your keyboard or there's also the tool uh, detail box underneath where you can adjust the size. And you can see that when I try to click right now, there's that little black um, X circle in there saying it can't work. So you have to control click. And once you control click, see how there's that blue circle that showed up? That's the sampling area. So when I click and drag, it's sampling pixels from the other area to repair the image. And I may occasionally have to control click again to change my sample area as I move. And there we can see I've already kind of repaired this part of the image. So if I zoom out, you can see that that crease is pretty much gone to the, to the eye there. So I'm going to continue working my way up. And again, changing my sample as I go by control clicking. So I'll go to my healing tool again, click on that. And again, that, I have to control click for it to work. So it's sampling from an area. And I'm going to work my way up to his face. Now you can see when I get to the corner of his face, or if I just go crazy on it, um, I can mess it up pretty easily. So to undo that, if I go up here, there's a history palette. If I click on that, I can undo step by step everything that I've done so far, all the way up to when I open the document. So if you do anything, you slip, someone knocks your elbow, and you do something wrong, you can very easily take a back step. All right. So what I want to show you here, though, is that the healing tool kind of softly feathers the outside. So when you get up to the side of his head and you're healing it, you can see it kind of looks like there's this faded gradient coming off from his head. So this is what we're going to use the clone tool. So I switched over to the clone tool and I'm going to adjust the size. Like if I have too huge, it'd be ridiculous. So I want it to be an appropriate size. And I'm going to control click. This is slightly different than the healing tool because it doesn't do that feathered aspect. It really is copying and pasting. It's really rough looking too. So you can see the outside of where I'm cloning. It's very obvious when someone clones. So that's why I'm gonna go back in with the healing tool and heal around the area where I cloned. And that way it softens it up and makes it less obvious. So there I have a nice hard edge next to his forehead like it should be, but it's still got rid of that crease going through. So again, control clicking for my sample and drag it up and I'm working away and I need to still fix that area in his um, his hair but we'll get to that later it's the same same process so healing up to this other crack and you can see somebody along the way used like a red marker or something to try and patch it up at home and when I'm healing it kind of mixes the pixels from both the selection and the area you're working in so sometimes if there's like a tint like that pinkish tint 
it doesn't go away. You can use the cloning tool, which is what I'm doing right now. And again, cloning tool is really obvious. Like you can see where I just used that. So I'll go back in with my healing tool and that will soften it up and make it blend a little bit better. So there I was able to get rid of any of that pink tint from the other um, prior editing that someone did in person. All right, so now I'm gonna zoom and I'll go fit to windows so I can kind of see what I've, what I've done. And I have to continue down this crack, I have to continue kind of in the corners, but that's kind of a good place for you guys to start. I'm gonna show you really quickly just how crazy the healing tool and the cloning tool can get. So I'll go in on his face, I'll select the cloning tool, and I'm gonna adjust the size of it. I'm doing this on my keyboard, the sizing. I'll show you those keyboard shortcuts. So then I selected that area by control clicking and now it's really just copying and pasting those pixels. It's not doing any blending whatsoever because it's the cloning tool. But if I grab the healing tool and I click, you can see it kind of makes almost a ghost image of it because it's sort of trying to mix those pixels together. So you can see how wild it can get. <laughs> And again, I can go to my history palette and back it all up. So you can just go a little wild with it and play around with the tool and see what's possible. You can give them 800 eyes. And then you can always just back it up on your history palette. So that's that. The goal of this is for you to make it look repaired, not to give him 800 eyes. So you can play around with it and then undo it. But ultimately, the task is to try and fix the photo.